Alrighty guys, so because I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, I did want to go ahead and do my base makeup off of camera. So I have my foundation, my concealer, and my powder done. In person, it's looking like it matches. In camera, I feel like I'm getting a slight bit of a white tint. That could be from my powder and because I don't have any other makeup on my face, but just so you guys are aware of that. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get started now and I think I'm going to go for kind of a purpley look because I have a bright purple lipstick that I want to use today. Um, so yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to do this video for and one of the reasons that I wanted to sit down and talk to you guys is because a lot of my videos the reason I will sit here sometimes and say, you know, I don't do this for my job, that's why I can't do X, Y, or Z, or that's why I don't have the time to do X, Y, or Z, I feel like I say that all the time and I think it's coming across in the way that I want, but maybe it doesn't. So I wanted to explain that to you guys in case you were curious as to why I always mention that I don't do YouTube as my job, um, and that's why sometimes I have less resources or less time available to do things for YouTube that other YouTubers may be able to carve out um, or to allocate for their videos. Now, for me, the reason I say that is because I don't have a super large following. I don't have a lot of people who watch my content. Yes, I know that if I did more creative stuff, if I took more time and energy and put into my channel what some other YouTubers are doing, I could build a bigger following. Now, one of the things I think nowadays is that doing something like that now is harder than it was back when I first started uploading videos, where there wasn't as many people doing videos, YouTube wasn't so product promotion and sponsorship driven. It was really just a bunch of people on YouTube to, you know, posting videos, doing their makeup, sharing tips, sharing tricks, and all of that stuff. Now, nowadays, it's really nice that a lot of people, you know, younger and younger girls and boys um, are learning how to do their makeup and do it really, really well. And that's really amazing and that's so awesome. So tip videos and all of those things like the how-tos or the tutorials are not as popular as they used to be. I still like watching them. I still find them very fun, but a lot of people are kind of over it and they just want to move on to something new and exciting. So now you see all those challenge videos and, you know, like the get ready in my helicopter or, you know, get ready in this or do that, go here. So it's kind of like it's changed the dynamic of what YouTube is and the makeup community within YouTube. And for me, I kind of felt like I did my channel or started my channel for the old style of YouTube, doing tutorial based videos, doing, you know, the how to's, just playing with makeup, not really focusing on things like sponsorships and promotions and, you know, trying to be the next crazy challenge winner or whatever. And I just am that person that if I wanted to do something for a specific reason, I don't want to change what I'm doing because the space has changed. I want to do it for why I originally started and that may seem dumb to some people because some people may say if you want a big following, you might as well just jump on the bandwagon and do what everybody is doing and start some challenge videos, start doing some crazy out there, just cool interesting content and for me, that type of thing is great and doing those videos is great and there are big audiences for those kinds of videos but there definitely has to be an audience for people like me who like to just sit and watch makeup and play with makeup and things like that and I just feel like if I was to change the content of my channel and of my videos for what YouTube is becoming I'm gonna change why I created my channel to begin with and it's gonna change who I am as a YouTuber and I don't want to do that so that is why I say that you know although these videos are super popular I'm not really gonna get into doing them because that's not why I created my channel and they may not be videos that I necessarily want to do they just may be cool for me to watch but not something that I personally myself would like to sit down and film. So I just wanted you guys to know that that is why sometimes I don't push doing different content that may be something that a lot of people are doing now on YouTube and may be like very viral, the, the ideas may be very cool, very innovative, but I'm just not into doing that if it means that I'm gonna have to change why I started YouTube if 
doing those videos is what's going to get me following, then I don't want the following, if that makes sense. I like doing videos the way that I do videos. I have fun doing them this way. And, you know, as suck, as sucky, that's probably not a word, as disappointing sometimes as it may be or discouraging as it may be that I don't get a following doing the types of videos that I do. It's not the end of the world because I am in school, I am going to do a different career path than YouTube, which, you know, Again, it's not everybody's thing. Some people who do YouTube strictly do YouTube and don't want to do anything else. I'm one of those people that YouTube is not something I ever really saw myself doing as a full-time job and career. I definitely am that person who sometimes when things are going around in my life, I don't really enjoy doing, you know, social media posts and doing videos. Sometimes I do take little breaks from YouTube and from social media because it's just not super important in my life. It's fun for me to do and I enjoy doing it, but if there's so much other stuff going on and I'm worried about so much other stuff, I can put it on the back burner and I don't feel bad about doing that because I do have other prospects in my life of things that I'm going to be able to do and other paths and directions that I can go with my career and with, you know, my hobbies and things like that. So right now I am kind of at that stage where I like doing YouTube. I enjoy it. It's fun for me. And I understand that I do want to build my channel and I do hope to get to at least a thousand subscribers. That's always been my real goal in YouTube. But I do hope that people understand that although I want the subscriber base, I don't necessarily do this to become the next big YouTuber. So my channel is gonna focus mainly on videos of me doing makeup, playing with makeup, reviews, the old style beauty community YouTube. So that is just something I wanted to make note of because I don't want any of you guys to think that I'm just boring and I don't like to do things that are innovative or that I'm dumb and I don't realize that if I did those kind of videos, it would you know, garner more subscribers or more people following my channel. Um, I do realize that, but it's just kind of that thing, like I said, it's the cons of changing my content for me outweighs the pros of getting subscribers because at that point, if I gain subscribers because I do that, I'm gonna have to keep up doing those kinds of videos that I may not enjoy as much to keep the subscribers that I got due to the fact that I was doing those videos, if that makes sense. So I'm just at that point where I, except that my channel is not that big and that it may never even grow to what I want it to be, but that it's my hobby and I enjoy it and it's fun. And you know, that's all we really need in life is something to enjoy, something to have fun with, you know, nothing has to be that serious. You know, even if it was my job, I don't think I would ever want to take YouTube as serious as some people do because for me, it's like, even if it's your job, like I want to have fun in my job. You know, even if I'm going to end up doing what I plan to do, which is something in the psychology field, which you would want somebody in that field to be serious. And I for sure can take my job serious, but I also want it to be something I enjoy. I don't want it to be so serious that it takes the enjoyment or the fulfillment of doing that particular profession out of me going to work. Like, I don't want to go to work and just hate that I'm there. Um, and it would really suck, especially if it's a profession or a career path that I was super interested in and I took the time to really learn the um, basics and really perfect how I was going to succeed in that profession and then end up just kind of resenting it later on in life. I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I want to feel like I am doing something that fulfills me and my goals in life. So if you are curious, I am going to school and I am going for psychology and criminal justice. I am finishing up my bachelor's this semester. So I have about... What is the full semester? So 14 weeks about of school left. It gets done around the, I think, early to middle of December. So that is when I am set to graduate and hopefully everything goes smoothly with that. And then after that, I will be moving on into doing something hopefully in my field. Right now, I think any job that will really hire me for me to garner, or garner, not garner, garner experience in my field, I will be 
okay with because right now I want to just focus on getting more experience but my ultimate goal I think is I want to work with women and children and trauma so that is something that I'm hoping that in the future I'll be able to get to and that I'll be able to fulfill that goal so that, so wow English I'm talking way too much but in the future, I hope that I can fulfill that goal and that things will go better and smoother than they have been. I've had some troubles in college and things have not always gone the smoothest, but I definitely am, you know, sticking to a plan right now. I have plans to move out of my apartment. If you guys don't know, I live with my mom still because I am going back and forth. I do um, dorm when I'm in school, so I don't really stay in an apartment like in this place all year I am typically in school for the majority of the year um, but I do hope to move out once I graduate me and my boyfriend have plans to move into an apartment together so hopefully that works out as well um, but yeah once I can find out where I'm gonna be living hopefully I will be able to figure out what my job prospects are and where I will get the best experience and just the best exposure to my field and to just learning how to do better at what I have been studying. So that's kind of my plan right now and that's kind of what's been going on. Um, but yeah, I really just wanted to let you guys know that. I Sorry if it's super long-winded. I've kind of just been playing with my makeup right now while I'm talking, so sometimes I get a little distracted. That's part of why I don't do these videos that often is because when I do my makeup, I like to focus on my makeup, and I, when I'm doing a video, I like to focus on the video because I get distracted super easily. I like have the attention span of a goldfish or a squirrel, are probably both combined like it's really really bad sometimes how short my attention span is so I do like to make sure that I stay focused on one thing at a time and that's why these videos are very hard for me to do but I hope I'm doing okay in this one um, but yeah if you guys were wondering what I'm using like I said I'm probably not gonna Ooh, I hope I did not blind you guys. I'm not gonna just like go and show you guys every color or every product that I'm using, but I'm trying out the new Lorac Pro 4 palette. It just recently came out and I have all the other ones and I'm a super big collector of palettes. Like if I have one in the line, I want all of them in the line. So that's why I picked this one up. And I was actually intrigued because some of these colors, especially up here in this row, they look super light. Like I was very concerned that I wasn't gonna like this one. Um, but when they swatch, they actually swatch out darker than they do look in the pan. So I was actually really happy about that because it, it it expects wow that doesn't even make sense it ends up being that i can use more of the colors than i originally thought on my skin tone if you have a lighter skin tone than me like i think this will pop so much more for me these colors most of them like these colors will look beautiful on a deeper skin tone but a lot of these I feel like will turn really ashy so I actually like I have a love-hate relationship with Lorac some of their palettes do look like this where they don't necessarily have that depth like they do have a couple dark shades but it doesn't have a nice gradient it goes from really pale to like really dark right away and I do wish that they had a lot more medium shades in this palette but you know to each their own. It's still a pretty palette and I think you can get good looks out of this, but I definitely think if you're like a medium dark to deep dark range, like you're gonna have to use other palettes or other colors, in my opinion, to get a pretty look out of this, just to get the depth that you want, or at least if you are going for the type of depth that I normally go for in looks, you would probably need different colors, but it's still a pretty palette, and especially the shimmers in this. I love Lorac shimmers. I do think they're super pretty, so I think you can get good looks, and it would be a good companion palette for some other ones. So I apologize, I had to go off camera and I did apply glitter. I accidentally knocked my glitter over while I was filming that, so I'm just gonna cut that out because it was a mess and a bitch and a half to clean up. So I just wanted to move on into the lower lash line. I did go ahead in with a base already just because I have hard times, you know, blending out my base on my lower lash line, so I figured that would be easier. So now I can go ahead and finish up my shadow. Um, but yeah, I wanted to actually talk about about this like the glitter the bold color the dramatic wing all of that because a lot of people nowadays have 
really accepted wearing bolder, brighter, more intense makeup, and that used to not be the case. It used to be if you wore these types of colors, ooh, wow, that's kind of weird. I don't know what it is about this palette, but some of the shades definitely, like if the flecks get into my eyes, they kind of burn. So be aware of that. I don't know why that's happening. Um, that's kind of odd, but I've been noticing that a little bit when I'm getting some fallout. I always get a tiny bit of shadow fallout into my eye, just like when I'm doing my lower lash line especially, or like the inner corner. But I've been noticing that I have had a slight bit of burning, so just in case you are super sensitive, just be aware of that with this palette, because I'm not sure if it's the certain colors or like the formula, or my eyes are just sensitive, but I've never experienced that before. But Anyway, back to what I was saying, I do love the fact that nowadays it's a lot more acceptable to wear brighter, bolder colors in, you know, platforms and in areas that maybe you weren't able to do before. Like a lot of like more professional type areas, I think, are getting a little bit more relaxed, but definitely in just the normal social community, you definitely see a lot of people more accepting of those who wear brighter, bolder, dramatic makeup. Now, that wasn't the case in the sense that most people who did that back in the day actually got that kind of ooh, what is she doing or what is he doing? Why would they do that? You know, somebody should tell them that they have way too much makeup on. And I have just always been that person that lives by the motto of, if I spent all this time applying this cake to my face, you really think I wanna look exactly the way I did when I first started? Obviously, I wouldn't want that, right? You know, most people I think would agree with me is that if I'm gonna take the time to do makeup, I want to look somewhat different than I did originally. Now for some people, that's just enhancing their natural beauty or covering some imperfections that they may not be happy with, but for me, that's just not enough because I take a lot of time to do my makeup sometimes and yeah, sometimes my looks aren't super intricate or there's not much going on with them. Like even this, I wouldn't consider super intricate. It's just a basic smoky cat like shape eye with a bit of glitter popped on it. But you know, for me, if I'm gonna take a lot of time to do my makeup, I might as well do something fun. I might show my creativity. I might as well just go crazy with all of that. So that's kind of my justification in a sense of why I do some of the things that I do in the ways that I do them. And I just wanted to let you guys know that if you are interested at all in doing makeup that's a little bit more out there and more fun and you are scared to do it and are afraid that people are gonna judge you or people are gonna look at you funny, I'm gonna sit here, I'm gonna tell you, they are gonna look at you funny. They are gonna judge you. But who cares at the end of the day if you have cake on your face? You or them? Does it matter if they think anything of it? No, because it's your face and if it makes you happy, all it's gonna do is just enhance your life. And realistically, all the people who are gonna have an issue with it are gonna be people who are not long-term people in your life or have no say in what you do from here on out or how your life is gonna end up. So no, not no, don't spend time of wondering or worrying about what people are gonna think and all of that stuff. It took me a long time to really realize that and I definitely still have issues with it. Like I definitely could learn to not let other people get me down, especially when it comes to like my weight and like how certain things look and fit on me like clothes wise. And then even like with my hair, sometimes I get judged. Like when I shave my head, I definitely got a lot of like negative feedback as to like why I would do that, but you know what? In the end, I loved having my head shaved. I loved the way it looked on me, and I realized towards the end that all the people that were telling me things that were negative really didn't matter. Like one of my friends, I was hanging out with him one time him and his brother and a couple of his friends and I had my head shaved and I was like wearing my hair up so it was definitely showing that it was shaved and I remember when we left hanging out with his friends like when his friends all left he like pulled me aside and told me you know they made some comments that like why does she have her hair like that or that looks really weird she should grow it out and at first I was so offended and so hurt and I like part of me was like oh my god like people just like hate it like it looks so funny does it really 
look that bad maybe I should grow it out and then you know when I calm down and got over the initial shock I realized you know you can't let those people and what they say dictate what you do because you're never gonna be happy that way you're never gonna enjoy yourself you're never gonna be able to show your creativity your uniqueness your alternativeness none of that is gonna ever get to show through if you listen to what society and people say and do and think about you like just don't let it bother you and I know it's a weird thing to say because people you know always do that thing of like how can you not let it bother you you know if you have to hear it all the time and yeah it's gonna wear down on you but I think the thing that they mean is like grow a thick skin in the sense of try to do what you can to live your life for you not them and in turn it's going to end up as you not really focusing on them anymore and focusing on you so that's just something I always wanted to point out and I'm gonna do my lip now just cuz so I'm gonna stop talking but I did want to point that out because it's very important especially with those of you who are younger and trying to get into makeup or trying to be alternative like I may not look as alternative as some people do but I definitely sorry I just realized my septum was crooked I wasn't picking my nose I swear um, but I definitely have you know piercings and I have a lot of tattoos if you haven't watched my tattoo video I have a lot of tattoos on one of my legs because I've been starting a sleeve and when I wear certain things you know it definitely shows and I get a lot of stares and a lot of looks for it so I want you guys to know that if I didn't do any of this I wouldn't be who I am and I've realized that in the long run it only benefits me to do what I enjoy because it helps me be the best version of me that I can be so yeah anyways I'm gonna go ahead and do my lips now and I will mention this one because I'm actually super excited about this this is the Rimmel stay satin liquid lip color in the shade actually where is that 850 atomic and it's a bright ass purple and I'm super excited about this because it's so pretty and these are only, I think, $4.95, so around $5, and I got this at Walmart, and oh, do you see that? This lip is definitely inspired... This lipstick definitely inspired this video right now because I wanted to wear this and I just wanted something that would go with it. So definitely love this, and I love the formula of this one. I know I didn't... Like, I didn't want to do any, like, product reviews or anything in this video, but this is definitely a standout product for me. These retail at $5, and this formula is so unique to me. It really reminds me of, like, a bullet lipstick, like a cream finish bullet lipstick. That's what it reminds me of, but it definitely is that liquid lip, high opacity, just ease to apply, like a lip gloss type formula. And I really feel like this is going to be something that you should pick up if you like the idea of liquid lipsticks but you don't necessarily like the matte effect that they give I know there's so many people out there who really stray away from liquid lips because they don't prefer matte lips but they want that liquid lip aspect so for me this is better because it's kind of the best of both worlds it dries down a bit it's not transfer proof but it dries down a bit to the point where I do feel like it's more long-lasting than a bullet style cream lipstick um, it has that high opacity like a liquid lip the ease of application like a liquid lip Lip, um, but it definitely still has that hydration to it. It's not going to dry out your lips. It doesn't show any cracking or any like breakage or clumping because it has a lot of hydration in it. So definitely recommend these. I think that this formula is really good and really unique to the drugstore and to all liquid lip formulas. I've never found one that's like this. Any hydrating liquid lip that dries matte that I have found has been sticky to the point where if you mush your lips together like this it's not gonna just come back and look like this it's gonna lift the color and gonna make it look patchy but this doesn't do that so if you want something that's more hydrating but it's still a liquid lip formula definitely try the stay satins by Rimmel so now I can just move on to the cheeks and then I'll finish up the lashes off camera because I suck at applying lashes on camera um, but I'm gonna go ahead and do my bronzer real quick I think today I'll probably use a flat brush. Why not? I'm testing this one out. It's one by Wet n Wild, and I want to see if this color... Okay, that does show up. When I was swatching it on the back of my hand, it didn't look like it would show up that well. It looked like a little bit lighter, and just because it has more of a satin finish, it looked like it might reflect to be almost non-existent on my skin. But, okay, that's not too bad. 
Let's really buff that out because that's a little warm for this look. While I'm just finishing this up right now, I just want to say thank you guys for those of you who do subscribe to my channel, those of you who watch my videos, you know, all the way through and do continue to come back. I know there are a few of you, there are some of you who do comment on my videos, which I really appreciate. It means so much to me. Um, and I know there are those of you who do thumbs up my videos, which I appreciate as well. All of your support just does mean so much to me. It's one of those things that like when I get the support from you guys it just encourages me to want to do more and to want to do things that are kind of out of my box videos like this that maybe I just never really tried in the past because they were just not something I was a hundred percent comfortable with so I'm so happy that you guys seem to be liking my videos especially recently I've been getting some positive feedback on them I hope you guys have been liking the thumbnails that I've been doing I'm trying to do some things like at least the things that I can and things that I can learn with thumbnails and editing and stuff like that to get my videos to look a little bit more appealing even if I'm not doing video ideas that a lot of people are interested in hopefully you guys would still tune into my channel just to watch the like editing style or just to watch the thumbnails or the cool different things that I create in some of my videos so I do hope that you guys have been noticing that and enjoying watching some of the videos that I've been putting out I've been trying to do some stuff that's slightly different than I've used to. I did a video that was like a dupe alert video, which I've never done before. I've done like a how I take off my makeup video or testing a product and taking off my makeup. And I just really enjoy now doing these videos that are slightly different because it's really just not so monotonous. Like it's really something that I think lets me get out of my box a little bit more, but I'm still doing stuff that I think is still within my comfort zone like it's not really going crazy but it definitely gives me more content and more I guess diversity on my channel for doing different types of looks so I really hope that you guys have noticed that I've been doing that and have been trying to get that type of content out to you guys so before I kind of close out this video let me go ahead and do my lashes off of camera and then I'll come back and show you guys the final look and then just kind of close this out so give me two seconds Alrighty, my love, so that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was something different for me to do. If you did like this video and like learning stuff about me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell because subscribing is a two-step process nowadays. Also, don't forget to thumbs this video up if you'd like to see more videos like this video from me. This one might have been a little bit long because I'm not used to it, but maybe in the future I'll be able to cut down on the things that I'm talking about just a little bit so that hopefully it's not super long and boring for you guys, but hopefully you guys did learn something about me today that you may not have known and hopefully it was still enjoyable. I love the way that this look came out so I do hope that you like that as well. If you'd like to see more in-depth like reviews or talking about different products that I use, again I will list them in the description bar but if you'd like to see anything specific let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to do that for you guys. But until then I hope you guys are having a wonderful day wherever you may be and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye everybody!